museum that I was honored to be a part of, along with other folks who are in part of this national movement, so I want to invite him up. He is Pastor Mike McBride. When I say all power, you say to the people, all power. To the people, all power. To the people. When I say all power, you say to the people, all power. To the people. All power. Reparations now is our mandate. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. My name is Michael McBride. I am a native of San Francisco. Grew up in the Bayview Hunters Point community. Uh, went to West Point Preschool up on the hill. Went to San Francisco Christian School on mission. Graduated from Philip Burton High School in 1993. San Francisco has produced me. I am a son of San Francisco. I love San Francisco. And yet so many of us are in exile from San Francisco. Because San Francisco has not loved us back the way we have loved our city. But we ought not be surprised because we are living in a country that does not believe that black bodies are grievable. That we are deserving to have our harm treated. We are a people in a land that forgets that over 100 million were lost in the Atlantic. 300 years of chattel slavery. 100 years of legal Jim and Jane Crow. 60 years since the passage of the civil rights movement packages and yet many of our rights are being eroded right before our eyes. Movements across the country to literally not teach our history so our children can't be taught that slavery actually benefited black people. How can we repair the harm? How can we move forward if we won't have elected officials and those in power give us what is owed to us? We're not asking for a handout. We're asking for a bill that is overdue. And we demand that bill to be paid today. I must remind you, beloved, that it is indeed the case that we are here not because we've thought of plans willy-nilly. There have literally been decades, if not a century worth of plans that have coalesced at this moment in time. Someone asked me, Pastor Mike, why do we need reparations? I responded and said, why won't you support reparations? The question isn't why do we need it. The question I have for every so-called progressive and every so-called liberal in the city of San Francisco is why would you stand in the way of reparations? more important than healing the harm of our own people? Is your next election more important than healing the harm of your own people? Is your proximity to whiteness more important than healing the harm of our people? What progressive and liberal and so-called Democrat will stand in the way of providing a bill that is overdue to the largest block of voters in the Democratic Party? No, the question is not why do we need reparations. The question to you, beloved, is why are you not supporting reparation in all of its forms? Yes. Yes. And so I would just say the power is always with the people. And when the people get together, there ain't no power like the power of the people. That's right. And so may we commit to stay the course whenever someone tells you no. Just like you peel an onion, keep on peeling. Because eventually, underneath every no, there is a yes. And that yes is reparations now. God bless you. To many of us in Japantown, some of you may remember, named Yori Wada. And what we learned from Yori was that the way 
to dismantle systemic racism was by doing it together. Yeah. And that is why he dedicated his life to serving hundreds of black youth through the Buchanan YMCA. Yeah. YMCA. Yeah. My mother and father and our entire community once got a glimpse of the systemic racism that's, that has oppressed the black community for centuries. When they were both incarcerated in 1942 for based solely on their race. And when it came time for this country to debate reparations for Japanese Americans, black leaders in this country could have said, what about us? What about the harm that we've experienced for centuries in this country? But the black community stood with us. And they said that it was the right thing to do. And so today, myself and many across this country remember that. And I want to say to all those who disparage the idea of black reparations, they are unwilling to talk about a very simple truth. And that is that the racial wealth gap in this country is not getting smaller. It is not staying the same. It is getting wider to this very day. And it is time to do something about that. I've had the privilege of being involved in reparations, discussions across this country, and I've met far too many black people who feel like they're in this struggle alone. And I'm here today to say that many in my community and the API community stand with you, and it is time for your community to find and experience economic justice in this country. words. I want to remind everyone that that racial wealth gap that we... Resolutions to recognize the harm it has caused, but has failed to take meaningful action. Instead, it offers crocodile tears and doubles down on the effort to let wealth and capital drive out class, uh, working class BIPOC residents of the city. Currently, the city is striving to streamline the development of market rate housing that does nothing to redress harm to African American residents, let alone maximize affordability or finance housing for working people. Instead, we get the latest urban renewal strategies, now seemingly colorblind, that still cause the economic and racial disparities that drive the need for reparations. We must reject these true, these, we must eject these policies and make sure there's true intention towards equity. That means reparations. I want to recognize the love and courage of the African American Reparations Advisory Committee. Thank you for taking us on this journey and porting us in San Francisco to this North Star. San Francisco needs truth and reconciliation to follow the African American uh, reparations Advisory Committee findings and truly offer restitution, the city must provide guarantees not to repeat the harms and transform itself to uproot this system. <laughs> reparations is a labor of faith, love, and compassion. It recognizes our ancestors, their resilience, their contributions, and sacrifices. Reparations offer us a chance to recognize our own humanity and provides a vision that builds a practice that must transform this city and how it functions and ensure access to what African Americans in San Francisco in this country need to thrive. Acknowledgement of their subjugation, commitment to action and undo the harm, transforming local government and society, not just for equality, but for social equity. As a former elected, Official in San Francisco, it is a personal duty to stand in solidarity with you today and demand and call on this city to adopt these recommendations for reparations. Thank you for having me here today. Reparations now. Thank you, John. All power. All power. Listen, I want to keep our energy high. Because I know this is a long day that we have ahead of us. And I know that there are a lot of y'all that are texting me asking if you can speak. And I want you to speak in City Hall. Okay? At the hearing. Because that's who needs to hear your voices. In public comment. 
That's where we need your presence, is in the chambers, in City Hall, as the Board of Supervisors listen to our presentation and then tell us how they will implement these recommendations to repair the harm to black San Francisco right now. I want to call up another ally in the struggle for black lives, for brown lives, for all lives in San Francisco. He is the president of the Latin Democratic Club, my brother, my Boricua brother, hey. Kevin Ortiz. Hey. Also with my co-president uh, Del Del Medina here today, uh, and I just want to say that we're honored uh, to stand. We're honored to be in solidarity with the African American and Black community in San Francisco. I want to first thank the African American Reparations Committee for a comprehensive report on how to redress the harms done to the Black community. But let me be clear: the recommendations of the Reparation Committee will not undo the harms, but it's a good start. It's a good start. We know San Francisco. Si se puede, mi gente. This city has no problem, absolutely no problem, having policies and procedures that allow some people to become millionaires and billionaires. So I see no problem whatsoever allowing black San Franciscan after, through this reparations bill the opportunity to repair the harm it's created. You cannot have people blocks away from here who are multimillionaires who do not do anything for the city, do not contribute to the city, do not make the culture more vibrant, do not make the world better in any way, shape, or form, being allowed to do what they do without actually redressing these harms. So it is with great honor and gratitude that I have to be able to say, si se puede. Si se puede. And this afternoon, I look forward to celebrating with all of you the fact that San Francisco is going to be at the forefront of making sure that African Americans are repaired. Thank you so much. Thank you, Della, and my brother, Kevin Ortiz. We've got a limited amount of time and a couple more speakers, and then I'm gonna give y'all some instructions on what we are gonna do next before we go into the chambers, amen? amen. All right, so I wanna invite up uh, Dr. April Silas, who is the director of the Homeless Children Network, but also a member of the LGBTQI Advisory Committee for the San Francisco Human Rights Commission. We appreciate you being here, Dr. Silas. He steps aside. Okay, I have a question. I need permission. Dr. Davis? Do I have your permission to let loose just a little bit? Okay, I needed that. I won't do it without my leaders. They give me the thumbs up, it's over. It is over. If I were you, I would stretch just a little bit. Something, the ligaments, your necks, twist something. Cause we about to tear this place up and down. But for the purpose of lifting it up again, throwing that shit up in the air. It and rocking it to come sleep on, come on because this is our city. Am I clear? Yeah. I'm clear. Yeah. All right. I come to speak truth come on, to man. power, my yes. people. Yes. There is one power, and reparations is teaching us that. Come you on. see, the trauma of racism can teach people of African descent to forget who we are. There is a power greater than any harm or power greater than all the trauma of power within us and around us and underneath us inside of us rocking our feet rocking our babies waking up the dead inside of us keeping our ancestors alive making us shake when we try to be calm and calm when we want to go crazy it is a power and that power is alive today and you better believe that power is on every page of that 390 a document of exquisite brilliance. Yeah. Come on, that power is alive today. Am I clear? Yeah. Make sure I'm clear, my people. Yeah. One yeah. power. That power is in our leaders. That power is in each of you. It's in our community. Come on. Yes. Yeah. Our yeah. sweat, our blood, our tears, our labor, our hurt. Yeah. All of those we've put to rest yeah. in the heels and in the arms of the unjust they have seen has not been in vain. Yes. That power 
is the unity among us. That's what's sweet, baby. You see, the supervisor and no other supervisor going to be able to select one of the pieces of reparation recommendation at the expense of all the others. We want it all. Uh oh, wait a minute. I heard you. Say, we want it all. All of it. Every drop of it. Every bit of it. We don't want when you repair, we don't want you to leave nothing out. Repair our feet. Repair our knees. Repair our cuts and our soles and our backs and our necks and our arms and our feet, our hands, the temple of our heads. Every prayer that was well off of one of the ships. Repair the look in their eyes as they said goodbye to what we're saying hello to today. Amen? Amen. We must have the power to declare what we want. You see, we are the authors. We're not the subjects. Let me be clear. The word reparations does not have a question mark after it. It is not reparations. Please, would you, could you? I hope you're open to it. See if you can get back to us. We thank you. We've given you enough reason. If not, we'll take another two or three or four or five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, four, fifteen, sixteen, to write some more. The research is done. You, we are living proof of that. Am I clear, my people? Gratitude. We must take moments to celebrate, to be grateful, to look at our leaders, to call them out, call them by name, to look at the committees, all the folks have done all of this work, and celebrate, hold each other close. Call out their names, call out the sweat, because I promise you, what you can see looks pretty, but it took more than we can see to bring this day about. Yes? Yes. yes. Now lastly, let's be willing to release it all into the arms of the ethers of the infinite. That is that one power, knowing that it is done. I can let something go if I know it's already done. Is anybody feeling me? See, if I don't think it's done, I'm going to stare it down. See, see I'm going to worry, and I'm going to fall apart, and then I'm going to make some choice that is not of the sanctity of intelligence that is at the core of our people. No, this is done. And so it is. Amen. In the city that we were born in, the city that we experienced love and loss, came up with our families, too many of us feel like we don't belong here. But somehow in the middle of all that, the black community of San Francisco has found a way to keep each other together. We have held each other down, we've lifted each other up, we've created space within space. That is what we do. But we can no longer be limited by the spaces that we occupy in this city. Because everywhere in San Francisco is black San Francisco. Not just the Fillmore, not just the Tenderloin, not just any pocket where you see people you can identify with. Every space in San Francisco should feel like it welcomes black space, black people, and all black people. Not just specific kinds of black people. Amen? Yeah. We got one more speaker and then we're going to close this thing out. Okay? Uh, we want to bring up Sally Tamayo Lee from SF Rising. Thank you to the SF Rising Coalition for always standing on the front lines for justice for all of our communities. Okay, let's get you inside. Um, today I stand before you as the co-director of San Francisco Rising, a multiracial alliance of grassroots organizations led by people of color, a political home for San Franciscans who care about justice and sustainability. Uh, shout out to Coleman Advocates who's here. Oh uh, yeah. My father's roots lie deep in the Western Edition, a neighborhood forever changed by the construction of Gary Boulevard, yeah. a symbol of displacement and lost dreams. Yeah. 
My grandparents, immigrants from the Philippines in the early 1950s, rented a flat from a black landlord at the corner of Bush and Laguna. Gary Boulevard in that time became more than just a road. It became a dividing line separating black from Japanese and white communities north of Sutter Street. It stripped people of their property and robbed the black community of its wealth. Some received compensation, but it was meager compared to the loss. And countless corporations benefited from taking these lands, and the property values for them skyrocketed. As a result, my dad saw many friends and family and businesses in the black community get pushed out of the Fillmore and the Western Edition, and that ain't right. It's time to actualize reparations. We can take notes from examples around the world. South, the South African government has paid victims of apartheid. The Philippines has issued some reparations to victims of martial law. And Germany has paid victims and survivors of the Jew Jewish Holocaust. We at San Francisco Rising urge all communities of color and indigenous communities to unite in a radical stance of solidarity with the black community in fight for reparations. This struggle for reparations is not merely about acknowledging historical injustices, but is also about the systemic exploitation, wage theft, and egregious human rights abuses that have plagued our communities. It's a call to action for every marginalized group to rise together because when we demand reparations, we demand an end to a system that has perpetuated suffering for far too long. Let us be bold in our pursuit of justice, for only when we move together against these injustices do we truly build a future that upholds and ignites the rights of all. Let's make San Francisco a good example. All power to the people. Thank you. We still appreciate you. Okay, we're about to close this thing out. Where's the team? Our team? Our team, where are you? At the end, yes. Hi, team. You didn't. You didn't know you was getting uh, appointed. <laughs> Voluntold what to do. We've had a lot of voices represent. And then the sensationalizing and perversion of our work in the press. And then the questions from people both in and outside of our community about what we are doing. I want y'all to understand something. Anytime black people say they are deserving of something, anytime black people actually get to touch anything that even closely resembles what we are deserving of, when our basic needs are met, we are in danger. Yes. Yes. We are. Yes. The narrative in this country from the moment we arrived here is that we are competition. That we are labor and nothing more. That we don't have the competency to do anything other than that. The most dangerous thing to a white person is a well-educated black person. Well, and understand that that education comes in many forms. It's in our DNA. It's one of the reasons why people sailed from the furthest reaches of this planet to our home continent to get the most skilled carpenters, agriculturalists, physicians, astronomers, healers, that is who we are. People who can navigate by sight with no map. People who found our way back home without ever having to leave this country. We brought Africa with us. We brought our culture here to this place. We put it into the fabric of this city. Frisco culture is black culture. Everything you know and love about San Francisco and all of its diversity exists because black people have stood in the gap and bridged arms with people from all walks of life, all over the, from all over the planet to create a sanctuary city for all. What we are calling for, what we are demanding today is that San Francisco become a sanctuary city for black people.
And while we don't want you to lose sight of the fact that you gon' pay us, because we are not asking. Because when you owe a debt, or when someone sues you and files a claim, they don't ask you if you feel all right with paying the debt. They don't ask you when you might be ready to pay it. They come collect. And I want black people to continue to have the audacity to claim what is rightfully ours in this city. Whether it's $5 million, whether it's that every black person in this city should have the opportunity to own a home in the city we help build. Whether it is the establishment of a black education system, not just one school. Pre-K, K through 12, and an HBCU. We want it all. Whether it's the establishment of a public bank that is ran by black people. Whether it's the opportunity for us to establish black business everywhere from Pax to Pack Heights to the Tenderloin to the furthest reaches of this city. In South Beach, where they have $3 billion projects on the land that we grew up covering our mouths from toxicity. This is our city. And we came here today to make sure that this city does not forget it. Chair McDonald and I and some of the other members of this advisory committee have spent the last couple of weeks sitting down with every member of this board of supervisors making phone calls. You have a hundred plus recommendations here. Find one, make it yours. Find one and make it yours. And when we come to City Hall on Tuesday the 19th, give us your plan for what you will do. We are making a presentation today on what we have learned over this two year process and what is in this report. It is your responsibility, city leadership, to make these actions. We deserve everything that we have called for here and we have not completed the work of naming all the new ways that this city can and will help black San Franciscans heal. Because make no mistake, if black San Franciscans cannot heal, this city will never be what it claims to be again. Understand that if black people are not housed, if black people are not well cared for, their, their mental and physical health, if black people do not have access to black-centered education in safe spaces where we can be ourselves, if we don't have our watering holes, Reverend Brown, That's right. That's right. then your city don't exist. Your downtown will never thrive again. Your waterfronts will not profit. The places that you have built on paper to house people will be filled with people who have not the authenticity that we brought to this city. We are part of the economic engine here. We deserve to have a piece of it. And we will not stop fighting. We will not stop showing up. We will not stop organizing. We will not stop bringing people together. We will not stop reaching across to other communities who do not look like us. We will not stop showing up here at City Hall or in the hood or anywhere else we deserve to be. Because there is no San Francisco without black San Francisco. Cut the check. Reparations now. Reparations now. Reparations now. Reparations now. San Francisco understand. The eyes of the world are on you today. Since we have been in this process, we've been interviewed by people in Germany, Australia, Barbados, France all over the world they are watching because if san francisco with a 14 billion dollar budget in a state that is one of the world's largest economies can put its money and its resources where its mouth is to show what it looks like to bring healing and closure to black san franciscans black americans will have an opportunity across this country black people will have this opportunity across the diaspora. And the people here today, your names will be recorded in history as a part of that movement. So, with that said, two things I'm gonna do. One is, I'm gonna remind you that after this, we got some food for you since you were kind enough to stick around. It's up in room 278, you can pick up your lunch, you can stay and hang out.
The hearing is going to begin at 2 p.m. We are going to present at 3 p.m. We invite you to stay for public comment. We know there are a lot of people who are coming later because they could not take off in the middle of the day, and that is okay. Make sure you call your people and let them know that we are going to start the presentation at 3, and after the presentation to the board, you'll have an opportunity to make your public comment. People can watch live stream on SFGov TV. They can also call in remotely for public comment. We expect this thing to be packed out, whether it's in person or virtually. We want to thank you for being here with us today. Understand that the work continues, the struggle continues, but there is no work without all of us together. So one last time, all power. To the all power. To the all power.